Chapter 1, Growing Shadows Our story begins with newly made friends traveling down a seldom used road toward Teppan Spring, a village built near a dangerous forest known as the Werewood. Hearing rumors of wild beasts going mad and attacking locals, Delilah Bard and Melody Silversong quickly run into a local hunter, Airy Thistle, and a traveling moon elf named Gale Ignis, who have seemingly located the source of this local madness. Contained within an ancient tomb adorned with religious iconography, our heroes found undead, ancient cultists, and felt a steady heartbeat that pulsed louder as they descended originating from an item at the lowest chamber, a small black sundial. Once picked up, the thrumming heartbeat stops, but terrible whispers can be heard from the item once held. That night, after receiving their reward, Delilah Bard's curiosity gets the best of her. In an attempt to learn more about the mysterious artifact and perhaps divine its purpose, the two are unbreakably linked. This linking creates a string of mad, incoherent ramblings that prevent her from sleeping, the only purpose seeming to be pointing the direction to a specific location, currently to the southeast. With this in mind, our party attempts to return back to the road whence they came towards Stonesboro, but on the path at night are approached by an elven druid. Natha Keish of the Stone Circle was drawn here by rumors of the mad wildlife, and in her watch over the Werewood noticed the arrival of several riders in black and that their travel southward is not safe. As gratitude for their assistance in removing this dark relic, she directs them eastward toward Whitebridge, and promises to help mislead their mysterious pursuers. As our group makes their way southward along the dangerous back road known as the Screaming Pass, and toward Whitebridge, and the direction of the Shadow Dial, Delilah struggles to sleep. On the way, they find a friendly roadside apothecary who offers to brew a potent sleep potion with the help of a flower known as the Midnight Violet that only grows in the garden of an abandoned nearby manor. Unfortunately, this mansion house reveals a dark past, with the Avergard family unleashing a powerful fiend upon the house. In the ensuing battle with the captive devil, Gil Ignis perishes, his body burned along with the rest of the vile manor. Our duo make their way to the trade hub of Whitebridge, well aware that they are being followed and quickly run into a new acquaintance, a dwarf named Oscar, patron of the Raven Queen, and given a vision to find these two. Our party is then attacked by a group of assassins known as the Spiders, who are allegedly receiving descriptions of them from a creature known as Rolar. While here, our party attempts to remove the Curse of the Shadow Dial to no avail, although their attempts do point them in the direction of the resident wizard, a conjurer named Alanak. The aged half-elf reveals to the party the origin of the item, an artifact of the mad god Thera's Dune, used to locate any of three legendary artifacts known as Theoparts. Curious, the wizard begins work to understand where this shadow dial may be leading our heroes. In the meantime, and in an attempt to gain both access to the resources of the local adventurers' guild, the Silver Halls, and gain some much-needed funds, the party heads north to the fort town of Heron's Perch, which has recently been waylaid by hobgoblins. Descending into various mountain tunnels within the Screaming Pass, our party find and liberate a dragonborn paladin of Bahamut named Tezet, and together locate and slay the hobgoblin warlord left in charge of the raids. However, in doing so, they discover some chilling news. These hobgoblins have recently been subjugated by a familiar name, the creature known as Rolar, who has apparently slain the King of Hill Giants and brought his undead form here as both a trophy and threat. In doing so, the tunnels have been largely emptied of goblinoids as a huge force heads north away from our party and their troubles, and leaving only an emissary behind fire genasi known as Fiersha, who cleverly evades capture from our heroes. Our party narrowly makes it out, and perhaps would not have if not for the help of a friendly local cloud giant named Onu. Grateful for them putting to rest the old soul of the hill giant king, she informs them that there has been anarchy with the giants of late, and believed an external force was at play. She left our heroes with several gifts, including the title Giant Friend, 
which named them as allies of her kind. With this information in hand and shared with a local garrison at Heron's Perch, our party returns to Whitebridge, where they gained official membership as members of the Silver Halls and were thereby dubbed the Loaded Dice. Returning to Alanek, his time researching had borne results, as he now believes he knows where the Shadow Dial is pointing them, the heart of the Stranded Sea. Combing through old texts, he uncovers a temple to Helm that once existed below the waves that was built by the old elven nation of Ruilian. With this revelation in hand, our party find a suitable captain and charter a ship to Oakenford across the Stranded Sea, encountering its great protector Himalde along the way. Arriving in Oakenford in the wake of a recent raid from both gnolls and ogres, our party trek into the wilderness of the Eldarin woodlands and find their way to the ruined city. A dangerous place infested with large crustacean-like monsters, they eventually make their way to a Temple of Helm, which indeed holds an inert portal in place of a proper chapel. A strange voice awakens and questions the party's intent upon entering the room, and permits them entry with the portal once again activating. As our party find themselves in the subterranean temple located under the treasure hoard of the Great Himalde, it is revealed to our party that this temple was sealed away long ago to hide a secret and terrible artifact, a weapon of dark smoke, a theopart. However, in so finding this artifact, the Dragon Turtle is enraged and violently floods the ancient temple and our party with it, only escaping thanks to the help of Ascending Stone and a benevolent wizard. Our party is whisked away back to the manor house in Whitebridge. No time for rest. It appeared our party were being watched. Soon after arriving, wet and exhausted, the downstairs door was blown open. Entering the house were three figures, a drow named Renevix, an armored ogre named Holfath, and a black dragonborn wearing heavy plate armor, identifying himself as Rolar. Renevix and Elenek did battle as Rolar engaged with the party, demanding both the Shadow Dial and their newly found Theopart, but also commending their effectiveness, and offering them a position of power in his Mind Reekers, as he so called them. The party declined and a brief battle was fought, with the magic of the Shadow Dial being dispelled and the link severed from Delilah. Their belongings were seized. It was this moment that Rolar revealed himself in a quick attempt to slay our would-be heroes as a full-fledged black dragon, thoroughly destroying the mansion. However, before their ends were met, Alanak appeared victorious from his duel and managed to teleport our party away to safety. Chapter 2 a Wild Frontier. 